The armies of the Soviet march to meet those who threaten her life. The machines of Soviet productivity, many born of her mechanical genius, mobilize to thrust back the invader. The breasts of her sons have never in the long history of Russia flinched before a foeman's steel. They do not flinch now. Her modernized factories have shown the world what they can do for the crafts of peace. Now they will show what they can provide for the filthy but unavoidable trade of war. What said the newspapers of Russia in these fateful days? The precise wording matters little. Perhaps you who listen can read them for yourselves. The import is the same as that of newspapers in many countries during the last two years. An English humorist coined the phrase, it's that man again. Yes, it's that man again. Here, as over almost all Europe, there comes into play the civil defense organizations at the behest of that evil man. Good bricks and mortar, cement and steel that might have gone to the construction of good dwellings, of useful factories, go to make air raid shelters. Decent citizens who should do nothing but follow decent occupations learn to make use of them. But listen. A call to stern service is sounded. What do the exact words matter? There, as in our own country, the response is the same. There, as here, the women come forward in their thousands. First of all, to undertake the works of mercy, to tend and bind together the poor, shattered forms mashed in the maw of the monster Moloch. Ministering angels, has many a poor Russian warrior already, alas, and yet, God be thanked, found these brave women. Modern Russia knows how to train them, how to find them the best implements, and how to inspire them to accept discipline. Elsewhere, the peoples of the Soviet bend their efforts to withstand and presently to break the onslaught of the Nazi. Not for nothing has the industrial policy of Russia been forged. It was designed to provide a sound basis for national prosperity. It is equally well devised to provide for national defense. An order from the top and the machines turn from peace productivity to warlike preparation. And let us remember this is a nation trained for 20 years to work for the nation. Perhaps that man forgot this. He will yet find reason to remember it. Why the Nazi attack on Russia? Here is one reason. Oil. Oil is the basis of modern mechanized war. Oil to feed the tanks. Oil to feed the aircraft. Oil for the 101 processes that the war machine demands. And Germany, hungry for oil, cast covetous eyes on the oil fields and rich supplies controlled by Russia. She intended to have them. Russia thinks otherwise. In calm and storm, the almost unknown personality of Joseph Stalin leads his people. Understood or misunderstood, he is to them the leader they trust and follow. For him, the armies march. His navy, recreated on modern lines with abundance of mosquito craft to operate from the protective strong points offered by the bigger ships, all answer the call of Stalin. The Russian has always been a fine seaman. If sometimes led to defeat, his own skill and prowess have never been in question. This time, his valor will be rewarded by victory. It is not for nothing that in his veins there runs the blood of Rurik the Sea Rover, the founder of the Russian state. His forebears on sea and land have struck back many an invader. These men, fighting with new weapons in a new technique, will do the same again. Beware, Hitler. Over against your mock craftsmen who practice only destruction stands a race of builders. They will stand long after you have fallen.